more. To be fair, who would know? I'd count silver fans <laughs> out there. I don't know. You know, I've been calling them the brown team, playing the brown team. So, um, but Corey's been looking after me on their stream. So, in regards to today's match, mate, who's standing up for you? Um, it's really hard to say, I suppose. Both those hookers uh, and both teams are doing a good job. You look at the amount of mud on the ground, the ball they've got to pass. They're both in the, in the squad and they're both fighting hard. I think the Charlene, I think, started number 13 for Richmond's work, been, a, been tirelessly yep. in the middle of yep. the park for them. And, of course, Serena's had some good touches. Raquel, who, who's playing six for uh, Manuru, has also been handy around the park. But a lot of the girls are working well. And it's really <laughs> tough conditions. I'm looking forward to see if we can get some points in the second half. Cheers, mate. Thanks for hobbling over here. Love your work. Hey, I uh, hope uh, speedy recover. And back to Corey now as the Marlins kick off. Yeah, big thanks to Chuck for joining us and giving us his thoughts on how the game is going. And we are now back underway for the second 40 minutes. And we are yet to see a point so far in this match. We'll see how the oh, uh, here second comes half a clean unfolds. jersey, ladies and gentlemen. And don't we love to see a clean jersey hit the middle of the mud patch? Yep, christened and in the game. And penalty there. Yeah, and Crystal Otto now out to have a quick chat there. I'm not too sure exactly what the penalty was for. Well, dirtying was, uh, the clean player. Rich. <laughs> Richmond on the ball, so we may have seen a little obstruction in there or something, but nonetheless, all that matters is it's a Rewa ball, and they are rolling, so here come the Manurewa side. And we just sort of alluded to not minutes ago during the halftime break, the first 10 minutes of this match may well see a wee bit of pressure mount here as the uh, Wahinis look to put some points on the board. Rota now into dummy half, back towards the sticks. Extremely hard to identify any of these players, but I think that one... Francie Hansen, not far from the line at all now, and this would be a valuable one if they could strike a blow here, the Manurewa side. She managed to hold on to that ball too there, it was a rapid pass. So push right up against the line here in a real test of this Richmond defence. Rota feeds play out to Nati. Clark involved, dummies, goes herself, but they get there in numbers, Richmond. Great defence. You can hear the call, chuck it, chuck it. A little kick over the top there from, I think it was Raquel Anderson-Pittman, who Chuck just highlighted as a player having a pretty solid start to the game. The management of your halves so important in a game like this, Troy, where you really need to oh. get the ball out in the right areas. Sorry, Sorry Corey. Yeah, Chuck being Brent Gimmel, win from the NZRL and uh, having a look at... Um, you know, some of the ferns that are going to be um, playing later on in the year and representing the country, and, you know, he was quite happy, eh, mate, with um, what he'd seen so far. And it's, a, so. it's a big year, obviously. You've got the World Cup coming up. Big at the run end of back, the year. too. She was running back from the outside gate. Some great work from the middle units of both teams here. But, yeah, as we mentioned, Troy, there are Kiwi ferns places on the line through this Auckland Women's Premiership competition as well, and a number of, uh, I guess, key positional battles in this one as well, as we see the bull spill loose. And so it's Rewa who are gaining the advantage a little bit in this second half so far. And it's through their defence, Troy. They've turned possession over twice there with uh, good defensive plays in this second half. Yeah, we talk about sometimes home advantage. Imagine if you brought the Australian uh, Jillaroos here to play in this weather, play on this field. <laughs> eh? They've probably never seen much. I these think people. they're default. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And look, we certainly hope that the conditions aren't too favourable for our Australian neighbours come World Cup time for the ladies at the end of the year. Really looking forward to that one. All the matches are going to be played at Southern Cross Group Stadium uh, where the Cronulla Sharks play their home games. Wow. So if you are over in that neck of the woods, it's going to be a really cool couple of weeks where you can go to the stadium and see some uh, top footy every week. And uh, of oh. course, not just the uh, New Zealand and Australian teams, but also England and uh, a number of others as well as we see the ball spilt out the back there from Clark. As you talk of Cronulla Shark Stadium, it brings me back to Kurt Sorensen. What a legend, and good to uh, catch up with those boys a few weeks ago. And a big shout-out to his brother, Dane. And if it is your first time tuning in, you might not have got the reference there, but basically Troy and I have a little game where every week Troy has to somehow incorporate Kurt Sorensen into the uh, chat. And uh, there you go, there's your plug for the day, Troy, and I expect not to hear another word about it for the rest of this one, but it was great to see Kurt at the reunion of the 77 Auckland team a few weeks ago at the home of Richmond, uh, along with a number of other no, legends, legends here. Legends down there, yeah, it was a fabulous day, and um, big, big ups to Richmond for the hosting, and uh, it's just so good to see the 77 legend team back together and really enjoying themselves on that day. And man, there's going to have to be some shampoo used after this match in regards to some of the girls that are out here. 
that looks like a cake of mud hat that that girl's got on top of her head just off to the left hand side here we can't see it on the screen and uh, we're just very fortunate to be quite close to some of the players um, man she's muddy out there today ladies and gentlemen and just on that a few of the girls who are heading away to the World Cup are looking for sponsors maybe there's a uh a hair product company out there that could get it. Me and Troy have pretty much got your sponsorship plug already, so yeah. if there's anyone out there... Old uh, Spice, Burl Cream. There we go. Maybe not. Too soon? So look, we're out, Troy. Back to the game, we are starting to see a few errors starting to creep in. That was a pretty clean first half in terms of handling. Pretty high completion rates for both teams, but a few errors creeping in now, and I guess as fatigue kind of uh, starts to compound, those errors are going to come in as well. Yeah, that too, and, and the fact that they, they're struggling to have clean recognition of who the outside player is because you know sometimes you do second guess when somebody's calling for the ball and rest assured Corey there'll be some little sneaky player out there calling for the ball for the offload and it'll turn out they're not even playing on that team. <laughs> It'd be a waste not to in these conditions we see a great run in the middle from Clark so Richmond really soaking up a fair bit of pressure to start this second period here and the women of league clash at Cornwall Park in Auckland with five minutes in and just as we say that there's a drop and a little reprieve for the Roses who will play the ball about 10 metres off their line here and parts of the field now really starting to uh, to chew up not just in the middle but uh, also down near the end goals where teams have spent a little bit of time so Richmond back on the ball now and they look to work it out outside back's going to get involved in this set just relieve the forwards a little bit they had to do a few sets in a row there of defence, which is going to have taken out of them. So, great run. The outside backs getting involved, and there's an excellent run there. We'd love to tell you who it was, but we can't see the number. Great leg drive, though. Great leg drive. Well done. But whoever you are, that's a fantastic run there. As uh, Hale now works it down to the left, and of course we recognise Georgia because she joined us in the commentary earlier today, and the ball spills loose there from Hale. So we were back on the ball here, and so far it's all we were in the second half, really starting to turn the screws on this Richmond team. But can they find points? At the end of it, Rota darts to the left, comes back inside, oh. ball spills out the back. Play on is the call so far. So still without a point in this game, but don't be mistaken, ladies and gentlemen, it has not been a boring game by any stretch of the imagination. End-to-end -end stuff, and both teams throwing plenty at each other, but it's high-quality defence that's keeping things even. As we will now oh. look to open the scoring, and that one just... Uh, just a little one there, looked yeah. like maybe took the eyes off the ball, looking up at the uh, defensive line, and uh, and down it goes. A and to be there. fair, it's a rare error. There haven't yeah. been that many considering the conditions, eh? Um, and one of the things, too, just need to do at this point is a big shout-out to the ARL board for, um, you know, freeing up the funds for being allowing us to bring you the live stream free, not just around Auckland, New Zealand, the world, and, um, and for Greg to allow... Troy to go and buy all the business tools that he needs to make it help as well. So good on you, Greg. Keep going. And how good is it, Troy? You know, it's it's not that long ago that you could never have imagined sort of coverage like this for the domestic women's game. So it's fantastic to see the ARL uh, putting days like this on, and it's fantastic to be able to live stream our best female talent in rugby league. So big shout out to the ARL, and we look forward to. Uh, a number of live stream games for the remainder of the year. We've got the SAS College Rugby League coming up as well as the SAS Fox Memorial Premiership as we head towards the back end of that, the final quarter of the regular season, I guess, Troy. Plenty to like about what's going on in both the Fox and Sharman right now and really enjoying the opportunity to be involved in the coverage of that. Now as Richmond look to come up over halfway and I'd love to see some of the tackle counts today, particularly the Manurewa number nine, Crystal Rota, who has been involved in everything and has been their best player through these opening exchanges. Great hands there. She and equally, well uh, off the uh, flank, caught that ball with the man on. Crystal's opposite number today as well. Thompson has been superb. Plenty of defensive work for the ladies in the middle of the park. And Troy, simple things like picking the ball up in these conditions are oh. not easy. So. Simple, simple things like seeing the ball. <laughs> that, my friend, was a brand new white Steedon ball at kickoff, and it lasted all of 38 seconds. And to whoever is uh, washing the kits for the respective teams today, our early commiserations. You're going to have a fun week, I would imagine, particularly if the rain keeps up. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a woman in league that's going home to wash these jerseys before she feeds the children, gets ready for work tomorrow after playing 80 minutes of smashing each other in football. And what you might like to do actually is pay a visit to Waterview Laundromat, who sponsor the uh, Richmond Bulldogs. A big uh, 
Shout out to the team at Waterview, Devish, and the team. Uh, loyal supporters supports a, a number of local clubs. Yep, he's got Does a couple Devish, of uh, teams that you mean. Uh, with the Bulldogs and, of course, the Otara Scorpions as well. So a big shout out to Devish. I dare say he'll be Good having hands. a busy week. Had that covered really today. well. Yeah. She's had a strong game. Molly Fraser, she's been really clean at the back, scooped up a couple of difficult ones there and returned the ball with vigour as well, so yeah. having a really yeah. good game. And a lovely ribbon in her here too. And there was a that, line. That, was a bit, <laughs> <laughs> that stunned you, eh, no, Corey? I'm, I'm reminded of a line from Matty <laughs> earlier in the commentary, something along the lines of look good, play good, which is obviously a, uh, a bit of a tagline for some of the girls here. Yeah. No, she's had a strong game. She's up uh, playing the ball again now. She's, um, you know, effort on effort. She's done really, really well. Good pick up around the legs there from one of the Richmond players. Number Mud. Up over halfway. Thompson out of dummy half. Good run. Easy meters on offering there. Just making the most of that tiring line. And just as I praise her, a little spill there. And it uh, looks like I've been infected with the Troy Hardy curse. I've just seen Georgia Hale out here on the wing having a breather. Can't quite hear us. Very, very close to the commentary box, and um, she worked uh, very well with us this morning in regards to calling some of the matches, and we appreciated her time. I don't know what you're looking at, Troy, but I think Georgia might actually be in the scrum. Really? I think. It's hard to tell. Can't well, the numbers anyway. I'm going with... No, I'm not. <laughs> Am I? It's so... hard to know. In fact, are we even looking at Richmond? <laughs> well, I tell you what, here's the tip. The person out there in the orange jersey talking to the little seven, the little set white seven, we can make this seven. Alex He's the referee. Yeah. Well, you can tell the smart players who don't take hits, Troy, because <laughs> the back of the jersey's clean. And obviously, um, Alex Cook has been directing traffic really oh, well, having a fine game, bubble. but yet to be taken to ground too much by the look of things. And like any good number seven, the jersey should remain clean. Yep. So the error rate is kind of starting to stack up a little bit here in this one and hopefully the teams can get that sorted and we don't see too much of a drop off in the quality because it has been phenomenal quality really when you consider the conditions and, and what the two teams have thrown at each other and some of the goal line defence just superb today so credit to both teams so far and we're in for a thrilling kind of final half hour of this one. And Troy, you're getting a feel for this game. Is you know, is, is either team kind of suggesting that they're maybe just in control of the arm wrestle at this point? No, mate. It's been pretty even both ways. You know, both sides have had opportunities. Um, both, both, both have squandered. You know, they've had um, a couple of back-to-back -back sets there, uh, especially in the first half. You know, Richmond are now down inside their uh, 20 for the the Wahinis. Uh, a lot of energy now starting to happen. Bit of conversation, you know, moving forward. They're really trying to hit that line hard. This is a good set, isn't it? Straight up towards the sports safe bolster there. Not far off the line here, so the Roses putting together a nice little set. Cook now onto the ball. They love that blind side, don't they? And the pass just behind it just allows Manurewa to push up there and make the tackle. Plenty of talk going on from the Rewa girls in defence as well. Cook on the ball. Spreads it one more to Hale, and again another one along the ground. Scooped up on this occasion by Rewa. Oh, and the ball. She didn't have to force it, did <laughs> they, they might have got away with one there. Yeah, so they it did. Like it might have been a, a the referee's little confused too, and he's out there. Knock on there, but um, I guess one of those 50-50 ones that can go either way. So a risky ploy there from Rewa after surviving a defensive set. And now Rota feeds it out. Good line speed again from Richmond. Valia, I think, leading the way. Georgia Hale finishing things off. Great fitness being shown by both teams, too. I mean, it's hard work running through uh, mud and trudge. And, um, you know, as opposed to being on a hard, fast ground, certainly takes a uh, toll on the lower part of the limbs. And um, I dare say a bit of lactic acid will be building up around the calves of a few of these girls. And spare a thought for the girls also involved with the national team and that program, Troy, they're right now not getting a day off because they go and do national team activities with the Kiwi Ferns. Usually, uh, I guess, on a Saturday, they might do a couple of things during the week and then they're doing all their extras, you know, their yeah, fitness and all yeah. that sort of thing. But that's what it takes to be an elite player at this level and you're balancing it with mm. a day job as well. Uh, Absolutely, a lot of the girls are and cooking and cleaning and doing everything yeah, else. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive what these uh, ladies are able to achieve uh, within a week in terms of all their training commitments and all that sort of thing. But so important as we build towards the World Cup. And look, um, it hurts me to say, but Australia's got it on us right now and, uh, and we need these girls to really put something back together because, uh, you know, we are the queens of 
World Rugby League in terms of the uh, the women's game. You know, there was a, a long period there where New Zealand didn't even lose a Test match, Troy. So, mm. um, obviously lost the World Cup in 2013. I know there's a real hunger to uh, to get that one back, and you know we're going to head into the World Cup off a string of really bad results, I guess, from uh, if you look at it on paper, losing the Anzac Test and also the Nines as well. So, uh, really looking good forward break to that here. one. As we cut back to the action, and as you mentioned, Troy, a good break, and there's a bit of grass on the uh, screen of the camera there just to the left, if you're wondering what that uh, brown thing is following the ball around the field. Bit of a smear on the camera there. It's going to be easier said than done getting that one off on a day like this. So we will just have to ignore that one now as play pushes up towards the sports safe bolsters right in the middle of the park. Hale on the ball now. Little double pump goes out to the back door, mm. but the edge defence from Rewa Really well organised there, Troy. Plenty of talking yeah. going on. And, um, you know, the fact that she chose to go to the air on that ball with a cutout, um, you know, sort of changed it up a wee bit because she's been going, you know, grubber kicking, going to the ground, using the feet a couple of times. So um, it might well be on our screen as the uh, production manager has come down oh, and basically said to Corey, there goes the mud, and we've got Richmond on the attack out here on the right hand edge. And we're going to wait for confirmation. Referee looks both ways, points to the spot, and we have a leader, ladies and gentlemen. First points of the game after 54 minutes. The Richmond Roses over, and in the end, just found a little numbers advantage out there. Not too sure exactly who the try scorer was. And look at the effort and reward on that. You probably can't see off to the left-hand side here. Every single Richmond player has come across from the far side of the field and they're just patting the try scorer. They're giving the five fives. The girls are feeling it. That meant a lot to them, that try. And uh, it's going to be interesting now to see what the response is from the Manurewa side as they get ready for the kick at goal. And um, our line's going to around there now. Just uh, getting ready as the Richmond kicker is fair way out. It'll be interesting to see whether she's got enough grunt in her to get that between the... The sticks out there, considering how heavy the ball's going to be along with the ground and the footing. But um, that try meant a lot to them, eh, Corey? Well, yeah, and unless this game's going to drastically change in its style, you would think there's probably not going to be many more than uh, 20 combined points probably scored in this one. So every point's going to count. Uh, and Richmond, well, we know that they can defend their line really well, so that try meant a lot to them there. Credit to Manurewa, though, who were phenomenal on their line for so many sets through the first half there. In the end, just found a uh, look like a little kind of numbers mismatch was all that caught them out. But uh, no dramas for the Rewa girls either, who will have plenty of confidence. They've shown they can do it on both sides of the ball so far, and a couple of little errors there just put them under pressure on their own line. But How important is this kick, mate? Moves in, strikes it, and just to the right. So four mm. points to nil. The Roses and Yetro, you wonder. How um, important that kick's going to be before the end of play. And um, make no mistake, the Marlins have got it in them to come back to, to put a try, to get a, um, you know, points on the board. And depending on where they put that try, uh, that two points could, make, could well be the difference between winning and losing this game. As you've said, it's not going to be a high-scoring match. And, um, you know... <laughs> I just I thought of something, but I had a bit of a giggle there yesterday when we were at the Manuri, uh, sorry, the Mungary East game, just on full time at the half, and I said, yeah, he's going to drop goal, and the guy dropped goal. Yeah, that, oh, I suppose you had to be there for that one, but that you can watch a, the uh, you can watch the replay on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it was a bit of a perplexing decision given that I think it was 14-4 like <laughs> the score at the time, so the uh, the old drop goal to make it 14-5. I think we saw a, a game a couple of weeks ago. It was a 50-0 game, and the team on nil, they decided to kick a field goal on their last play of the game to make sure that they weren't kept to zero. But, Troy, you mentioned the goal kicking, and it's not really about centering it so much as the try scorer's got to look up, find where the mud puddle is, <laughs> and just right. try and avoid that. Yeah, so uh, Richmond now creep ahead four points, and um, they're going to take a lot of confidence from that as they start charging back up the field. So big yeah. set here for Rewa. They need to make a bit of a defensive statement here, then get the ball, complete their set, and start putting a little bit of pressure back on the Roses, who have started to just edge ahead in this arm wrestle. But boy, it's been a fantastic game so far, and we've still got 20-odd minutes to go now as Cook she turns to back yet. inside. She held on to that ball. She did well there. I don't think she had the full grasp, but she was hit. So up into the attacking half now. Last play, Hale takes it to the line and then dribbles another kick through. And unsurprisingly, it's not on the, the ground. And if you can find the ball at the end of that, you're a better man than me. 
And it's now white. Look at that. That's been cleaned. <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. So Rewa do recover. But again, Troy, started in the first half. Richmond going down that edge of the field where there is a lot of surface water kicking low. It's going to be incredibly hard to, uh, to retrieve that ball and almost paid off that time. You almost make it a 50-50 contest. Yeah. So perhaps some clever tactics there from the Richmond girls. It's either going to skim like a stone when you're throwing it on the ocean or it actually just stops. It's a hard one to read. So now we're back into the grind as the Wahini start driving it back out of their, their half. And uh, we seem to have spent a wee bit of time down there with a bubbled loose. up with a turnover. And it looked like there was a sort of a hand in there just punching that ball free of the grass. How strong is she? Rota and still going. Oh. So this is a big point in the match. They've turned play over on halfway and they're going to compound it with an penalty. Not too sure what that one's for. Hale keen to get things moving quickly. So huge set there for the Richmond ladies. Win back the ball with a bit of a one-on-one -on -one strip. It looked like on Rota. And they back it up. Just taking it again. These guys are starting to grow an extra leg now. Tax on. Richmond still going hard. So another one here, and Manuri was starting to come under a whole lot of pressure, and their defensive line has been excellent so far in this game, more than capable of holding them out. Richmond now starting to push up into the attacking 10. Hale on the ball. Spins play out the back to Cook. They've got numbers here, Richmond, but good sliding defence from Rewa. It's easy when you're playing off points, eh, Corey? That's right, yeah. A bit of a spring in the step, I guess, from the Richmond girls. And that was a pretty good kind of little period of the game for them there. They obviously won the ball back. Got a couple of penalties, so uh, they've been marched down this end of the field and now a chance to show what they've got. Great rushing defence there from Manurewa to close that one down. A little bit of an overlap out there on the left. They're going to go there again and unfortunately just spilled as they look to work that left-hand side. So credit to Manurewa there. Good aggressive line speed and it forces the drop from Hale. So 20 minutes to go in this one now and... It's anyone's game. Richmond with the one try. Scored in the corner. It took about, I think it was 57 odd minutes to, uh, to get the try. Got there in the end and uh, there's one jersey we can currently identify. It's uh, Alex Cook, the number seven. The only one without mud all over the back of the jersey so far. So we do apologise if we're not able to bring you all of the players' names. There are a couple that we recognise, but even that is getting harder now as uh, there's mud all over the faces to mark what has been a really physical game here and a really high quality game. Big contact there. Alex Cook involved in the tackle. Rewa now out of dummy half. Some good yardage on offer and there's the penalty they wanted. Much needed penalty for Manu Rewa. A bit of a relieving one there. You would think they will kick for touch here. Although given the conditions, looks like they're going to elect for a tap and go. So sacrifice a few metres but in these conditions, you never know what's going to happen if you try kicking for touch. So probably a smart move there from the Manurewa team as they trail 4-0 in this one. A bit of a left side shift here. As they come into the attacking half now, Serena Clark. Good legs, tackle down low. 45 metres off the line. Tackles up their sleeve here for Manurewa. Out of dummy half, Nazi. Surprisingly quick uh, footwork there by that young lady. Nice little dart out of dummy half. Now Clark again involved. Ball has spilt loose and we've got a knock on. So Richmond survived that one. And you see just a bit of a, a frustrated kind of shake of the head there from Serena Clark. Knew that was a good opportunity to get in there. And just as there's a little break in play, Taylor Anderson from the Auckland Rugby League has just joined us in the, um, the ARL studios down here live. And Taylor, um, how's the day been going, love? Oh, it's been very good, thank you. I saw you getting interviewed there earlier with uh, Mary Television, your little rock star, and uh, tell us how that go. Oh, it went really well. Um, if you want to catch me live, I'll be on uh, Maori TV tomorrow night at 5pm. Awesome. I'll probably record that and bring it into the office and we can all watch it. In regards to the activities today, though, um, been a great success? Uh, yes, I think so, considering the weather was quite bad, but um, good turnout, I think. Awesome, love. Look, I know you're really busy. I'll let you get back to it.
A big shout out to Tale and the rest of the ARL team for their excellent work promoting this day. As well as the live stream, it's been really good to bring you some of these games. And of course, uh, you will see plenty of stuff out of the Auckland Rugby League in terms of our Fox Memorial Premiership coverage as the year goes on, as well as the Crown of Trucks Shaman Cup. So back onto the field where we're into a bit of a holding pattern, I guess, in this game. Manuri with a good chance down the other end there, which went big in after a little error. Richmond now working it back into good ball territory. Just having a look at the time on the clock there for us, Corey. Yes, yeah, so we've got about 17 minutes remaining, Troy. Okay. It's Richmond kick again, covered well, well by fielded, uh, well fielded. I think Manurewa. that's Crystal Stowers out yeah. there, I think. And it's a nice little piece of grass there. Just you know, hasn't cut up yet, although it'd be very, very damp. Um, four points in the game. Oh, oh, she's bobbled it. And more pressure now to have to overcome for the uh, Wahinis as Richmond again get another set. Big error, big, big error now under plenty of pressure. Our Manurewa and uh, I guess shot themselves oh. in the foot a couple of times with a couple of Good errors coming drive. out of yardage and uh, hard to bring down there. Almost ends up up above the horizontal. Thompson into dummy half, looks left. Hale back on the inside. Meters off the line now. Other roses and another try here would be a big one, Troy. Yeah, and that could Thompson be Thompson out of dummy half, spots up a little gap. And that is a really clever try there from Kaylee Thompson. We think it is out of dummy half. Just spotted a little gap between the markers there, Troy, and goes over and, you know, speaking to uh, Brent Gemmel earlier, he said uh, Kaylee very much one of the girls in contention for that dummy half role for the Kiwi Ferns come the end of the year and uh, done her chances no harm there with a nice little try. And that's a, a pretty important one under the sticks as well. Potentially they can go 10 points in front here, Richmond. Yep, and uh, so that sort of just gives them a wee bit of breathing space now, even if Marlins do come back from here. Uh, the Wahinis, Manuri Wahinis. Um, that said, be nice to slot this goal right in front. And um, you can just off, well, we can, Corey, you can hear the girls chatting now. You know, look at the vibe going back. Look how they're striding back to their um, uh, getting ready for the kickoff. And as I look down to the right hand side there, um, the Marlins, Manuri Wahinis are standing there. And there's a, uh, there's a long chat happening at that point. So they're waiting for the kick to come. And just on some of our identifications of the players, there is the chance that we've got that uh, badly wrong as the kick goes over, and it's an important one. So uh, we do hope that we have got the player names correct in this one, but uh, not able to make out any of the playing numbers now, really. Uh, so a bit of a tough one for the commentary team, but at least we're not out there covering the mud, Troy. At least we're not a trainer out there talking to the wrong team. <laughs> Those trainers, they find a way onto the field, even if they've got to oh, talk to the wrong That's wrong right. Team. Yeah, no. I'm sure that one there's been feeding water and drinks and um, giving good advice to the other side, from the other side that he thought he was on. No, seriously, though, folks, um, the ground's been absolutely uh, cut up here today. There's been three matches played on it. And um, just back to the, uh, the level of expertise that these two teams have shown, considering the conditions, they've certainly uh, played a good yeah, match of footy. execution's been really good, and... Um, some of the goal on defence, just superb. And look, Rewa, far from out of this one as they look to get play back underway. Hale fields the kick. Big run off the back fence here. And the contact up to it as well. Look at the energy on the chat. Next runner, next runner. Here we go. Bang. And the Marlins, they need to match it here with line speed. They're getting yeah. quick play of the balls right now. Are the Richmond girls out towards the left edge? Oh. Valer, I think it is. Left side again. Hale now with hands on the ball. Dummies heads back inside, but Rewa up to task on that occasion. Good awareness from the defence. Another big one off the back fence. Nice little legs tackle. Late intervention there to knock the player to the ground. We're just over Last on their tackle. far lake side, aren't we, Corey? As they come back into the... Oh, no. As soon as I say that, ball goes behind the player. Yeah, it's a little drop ball there, and, uh, you know, it doesn't take much. If the pass is off just a little bit on a day like this, Troy, makes it very hard to play, and on that occasion, just down towards the hip. And the ball spills loose. Every, everyone's gone off-roading today, mate. So, Rewa, they need something here. They need a penalty or something to get them out of their own half. 
and then look to build something as we see a nice clean jersey. I dare say there's a substitute yeah. on the field. And welcome to the mud mire. <laughs> and there we go, one whole side of the body already covered in mud. And uh, you oh, think good, the strong next, D there. next tackle will take care of the rest of the jersey. So re one now, pushing hard for a break. Clark goes to the line, dummy steps back inside. Plenty of talk going on from Richmond in terms of their defensive organisation. To the left, up over halfway now. Last tackle coming up, so they need a good kick at the end of this. Nati on the ball. Dinks one over the top. The chase is good, but well cleaned up in the end by Richmond. And Molia Fraser picks it up at the back. Beats one, beats two. Still going. Powerful kick return. And eventually, Rewa get there in numbers to slow things down. So not a bad finish to the set there. A little pat on the head from Serena Clark. Some of the contact we're hearing down here, Troy, some big hits yeah. going on now. Serena's been busy too today. You know, she's had good, organi oh, gr good organisational skills and been communicating just non-stop. What a hit there, just targeting the hands a little bit and it forces the error from Richmond. They're not happy about it, but I think we're going to have a real feed in attacking territory. So, Troy, that's maybe the opportunity that the uh, main real side were after there. They needed something to get them out of their own half. And on this occasion, Richmond just coming up with a little error there. It was a good tackle from one of the Rewa players. And we are going to pack down a scrum now. We've got about 11 minutes left in this. The feature match of our Women in League round extravaganza down here at Cornwall Park in Auckland. Good Thank recovery you there, to mate. the uh, Auckland Rugby League. I keep going to say Carlaw Park, so there must be something yeah. about, the, uh, about the mud today. Yeah, and it's actually quite, quite close to the action. You know, um, yeah. some of these people have joined us and are standing in the mud. Good turn back inside and met by a, uh, a massive defender. So 10 minutes to go. Manuri will need a result. Doesn't need to be a try, but a repeat set, something to allow them to build some pressure in this one. Richmond have just kind of edged the advantage in the arm wrestle, but they got plenty in them, and they showed in the first half that they have got some real attacking threat. Of course, you only need to look at players like fullback Serena Clark. As Nati now comes out to first receiver. Clark floating around the back. Watch for her here. Hands on the ball. Cook with the initial contact, and then they get there in numbers, Richmond. Nice defense. Last tackle, big play coming up here for the Manurewa side in the terms of the game. Nati with a little Weave kick through. Kick There's through. a good chase. Yeah. And even if someone dives on it, we won't know who it is because all the players look the same. There's no jerseys today. It was a great kick, though. She weaved that through the eye of the needle, and um, she certainly managed to mount a bit of pressure. And uh, the Manurewa Wahini will be looking to do that again. Richmond getting ready to reset. And you have this sort of feeling at this point in the game, you can feel the tension in the in the room. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can sort of feel it building now. And I'm sure we mentioned it's been a, a really big day for these guys. A lot of uh, anticipation ahead of this one. Uh, it's been a long day. A lot of the players down early supporting the, uh, the young girls in the game as well. So uh, that's about to come to a head, I guess, in terms of this game as we uh, attend to a player down injured right now in the end goal. I was more around... Um, more around 10 minutes to go. Are we getting near the point of now or never? Not, not yet uh, for Manurewa, I think. Well, we've got two tries shown. to go unless they're going to have a couple of drop goals. Yeah, look, I think it's, it's that kind of game where once you get a bit of a roll on, and we've seen that with Richmond, once they've got a bit of confidence behind them, it kind of completely changed the game for them. So it's only going to take one try to, um, to obviously get Manurewa back in on the scoreboard, and then from there, confidence can really increase. So they've got a repeat set here, and a restart of play, and we're back underway with Rewa returning the ball. Yep. And the support still stayed here strong. Um, one of the other matches way over on the far side there has just completed, and a few of their supporters are strolling up now to join with us in the, uh, the last 10 of this match, and it's turning out to be a um, cliffhanger now as Manurewa start hitting the line. Big off the load there, place, and hopefully really she picked her player up. She has. Just short of the line here, and we have uh, temporarily lost our screen, which is back now. As we can get a close up on the play, right, they come out to the right. right. There's numbers here. If they can get it there, good scrambling defence from Richmond. Someone's gone over the line. We wait for confirmation from our referee. Points to the spot, and game on, Troy. 
Okay, so I bow down to your fine wisdom as you manage to forecast that try coming in. And Never that in takes them to Never four with two points to come. And we've got time on the clock to get another converted try. So we're set up for a thrilling finish and only fitting in this game. It's been an excellent game, really enjoyable match to finish our Women in League Day out here at Cornwall Park in Auckland. A try in the corner there, not too sure exactly who scored it. Looked like it may have been the centre or edge back rower out there on the right. But all that matters is it's four points on the board for Manurewa. We've got about eight minutes remaining in this clash. If you are just joining us... You've come late. You've, you've, now, just you've, quietly, you've just quietly, very Corey. Late. However, so. if you are just joining us, it's been an excellent game, uh, I guess, to some degree, dictated by the conditions a little bit, Troy. So, whilst we talk about the conditions, what happens here? Richmond Roses, do they just close it up now and grind it off? Marlins? The Marlins, they're going to throw caution to the wind. What's the strategy? I'm still trying to work out how you would grind a game off. But um, anyway, we maybe discuss that one later in terms of the uh, game terminology. But look, I, I don't think you can't, you can't really close a game out in these conditions easily. You've still got to play some footy because if you're, if you're not getting out of your half, then your kick's not going to be good. You're going to be kicking to them on the full. So they've got to keep playing footy. Uh, and for Manurewa, well, it's simple. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Um, you've been stopped by some really good goal line defence a couple of times. But finally got a breakthrough there. There'll be plenty of energy and plenty of talk from the Rewa girls here. As the winger on our side of the field now uh, comes over. And covered in mud and no doubt looking forward to a shower at the end of the match. That's a proper looking winger if you ask me. Maddie. if you see that <laughs> winger, that's what you should look like at the end of a match. So about she's just coming to screen now. Good shot. Well done, boys. Back and uh, Richmond not in any hurry. Unsurprising given that they hold the numerical advantage on the scoreboard. Maybe that's one way of grinding the clock off. Good solid kick. Great catch. Here comes the return. She winds up. Here we go. Big run. Oh. The back. And here we go. We've got an early spread on from Manurewa. So mixing it up a little bit. Just trying to find a way through what has been a very organised Richmond defence. And I yeah, dare the say, Troy, probably to the see... outside. You probably missed that one, Corey. Just the big screen came through from there. So look for it. So expect the unexpected on this set from Rewa. A couple of little trick plays here. Don't be surprised if we see a bit of a yep. spread out towards the left here. Crowd starting to chime in as well. Nati on the ball finds oh. Clark and uncharacteristic error there and from Serena. Just I think had a look up at the options on the outside there, Troy, and that's all it took for the ball to come loose. So big moment in the match here. So Richmond now. They won't be looking to be too expansive. They'll want to contain the, contain the set. Just keep trundling it up the middle of the park. So into attacking territory here. And it's currently a six-point ball game. Troy, the little drop there, which is going to mean a Manurewa scrum. But if you're Richmond, do you possibly look at the opportunity to uh, kick a field goal? I know hardly ideal kind of conditions for it with... Uh, Plenty of mud there, but is the field goal an option for Richmond? If uh... Yeah, it is an option. Big option. And in, in these sort of games, you need to create options. And let's hope that um, as they start to form the scrum now, that there will be more options to come. Sorry to wake you up from your little sleep there in the corner. It has been a long day, of course. You've reminded me several times that you were here before daylight, I believe. Uh, setting Back to the game, and here come the Wahinis, <laughs> and they're on attack. So Rewa now on the ball. And a big thank you to everyone who has made the footy happen today here at Cornwall Park. Did I mention to you I was here at 6 o'clock in the morning? They're certainly shifting it around now. I think they're going to throw um, caution to the wind and Marlins really, really need to open it up. So the Wahini's now starting to get a wee bit of energy back into their game. Let's not worry about the footy, Troy. I'd like to hear more about your day and all the hard work you've put in. But anyway, Manurewa. On the charge now, inside the attacking 40, and a penalty, and that is a big one because it's going to mean Rewa get the chance to start this set 40 metres out from the line. So we're building towards a spectacular finish here. About seven minutes remaining, and here come... They didn't kick the touch, mate. They just tap and go. And it, it seems to have been a... Oh, there's a little drop ball in there, and Rusty Matua will be filthy with that one. I see Finally what you did there. 
<laughs> I see what you did yes, there. Yes, another mud pun. Yep. We've been pretty good with them today, to be fair. <laughs> Some of our best work. Suck. Good. Hell, you've done some, you haven't even known you've done them. <laughs> and you can probably hear that in the background, and uh, we have no idea where that came from as we now get ready to set the scrum. And um, what a fabulous place it would be, Corey, you and me in that front row. And this girl's played strong all day. Somehow She's got a good fend. Front row, Troy. But anyway, we get back to the footy. I belong on the wing with a nice clean jersey. <laughs> here we go. So the Richmond girls, they know they need a big set here because Manuera are coming back and they're going to finish this game with a whole lot of enthusiasm. Yep. So right on halfway now, Richmond work it out through the middle. Well, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've just joined us, you've got to hear in time as the final hooter has gone. And we do apologise. It seems our uh, game clock was well out of whack there. We still had uh, quite, a, quite a while to go in this one. But congratulations nonetheless to the Richmond Roses who win a fantastic game here, a grinding affair here at Cornwall Park, dictated partly, I guess, by the conditions. And it was really tough footy to play, but uh, well done to Richmond. Ten points to four winners over Manurewa, and congratulations as well to the Manurewa girls who fought valiantly and came up with plenty of great goal line defensive stands. And in the end, it was just a, a couple of plays really that defined the match. So well done to both teams today as we close out the Women in League Day here at Cornwall Park in Auckland. A big thank you to everyone who has made it happen, all the volunteers down here on the ground. We are now going to hear from the captains from both teams if we can find them. I have a couple of little interviews, kind of hear how that game went from their point of view. And it will be interesting to hear the analysis of it because, boy, from the sideline, it was a tough one. Fought mostly through the middle of the park. We saw some really classy play from the respective halves from both teams. And in the end, Richmond get up for what will be a, a huge victory for them in terms of... Uh, their season, of course, they've narrowly missed out on the grand final the last couple of seasons, so a big win for them here. They highlighted this one as a key game. But fantastic that both teams were able to put on such a quality showing. So we will be back in just a couple of minutes to hear from the captains. So stay with us. We are joined by the uh, victorious coach, Seth, and mate, what a game, a, a brutal battle in the middle of the park, partly dictated by the conditions, but boy, what a battle between the middle forwards. Yeah, no, it was, it was going to be a game of the, of the, of the forwards, um, and, and the game was either won or lost in the middle, so we were just glad that our girls um, picked up and, and worked hard for each other in the middle. Particularly in the first half, given the conditions, the completions were, were pretty good, the ball handling was pretty good from both sides, uh, pretty exceptional given, you know, the, the rain and, and the mud out there. No, I was quite surprised, you know, for um, both teams, ball, had, ball control was awesome, especially in the conditions and the muddy patch out there. Um, so, yeah, big ups to both teams on that. Who stood up for your team? You know, there's a couple of individual um, performers, I thought, in the forward pack that were really strong. You know, from your point of view, who were the standouts? No, I think our whole forward pack stood out. Um, I think our bench gave us a bit of a lift. Um, I thought um, our number 13, Charlene Atai, played well. Um, but again, you know, everyone in that middle played well. I guess from your point of view, it's a huge win in terms of your season. You've obviously fallen just short of the grand final the last few years, so this one's a, a pretty big confidence booster for you? Uh, it was. It was just to see where we're at. You know, obviously, Manurera's at the top four for a reason. Um, and for our, our girls, it was just a, um, 
a turning point to see where we're at as, as, a, as a squad, where we, how far we've come uh, during the season, but yeah, no, very happy with the result. I guess to make sure we give plenty of credit to the Manurewa team as well, because that was a great advert for women's football. Some of the skills on display there were, were fantastic. Oh, definitely. Big, big ups to, to Manurewa. You know, they always bring it, and they, they go for the whole 80 minutes. You know, Rusty's done a good job out there. And, and to see the calibre of, of players on both sides, both Kiwi Ferns, Akarana and Kaunis, is, is good to see. And hopefully it'll, it'll promote the game for, for the future. Uh, it has been a big day out here for the Women in League Round, organised by the Auckland Rugby League, something I know you are passionate about. You enjoyed the day, mate? Yeah, no, I loved it. You know, the Rosebuds had a couple of Rosebud teams here. So that was good. But in general, you know, the, the Women's Rugby League is heading towards a, in a good direction. And it's just good to see the, the, the end product with the Roses and Manurea as well playing. Congratulations, and uh, get home and get started on that washing, eh? Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Seth. We are now going to welcome in uh, Rusty. Thanks for joining us, Rusty. Uh, first of all, commiserations. Uh, probably no team really deserved to lose that one. It was a fantastic performance from your girls, but just a couple of key moments, probably the difference. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm not conducive to good uh, flowing football today. It's a bit of a mud fest, as we can see. Um, obviously not the best uh, performance for, for our girls in uh, our first loss of the year. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go back to training. We'll keep working hard. And um, hopefully next time we play them, it'll be, it'll be a dry track and the, and the sun will be shining. You mentioned the conditions, and obviously, you know, it was never going to be free-flowing footy, but the completion rate from your team in the first half, and, and Richmond as well, really impressive. It was a great advert for, uh, for women's football, I thought. Oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah, we've got, um, you know, nine girls in, in Manurewa, ten girls in, in Richmond, so you've got 19 girls in the Kiwi Fern squad, so the quality is outstanding. And uh, yeah, so you expect that, uh, that, that, that kind of standard, uh, you know, I suppose, but, um, yeah, the girls are, are great players, and uh, the defence was awesome too. Uh, I think a lot of the premiers could take a, a few lessons from the girls today. I was just going to say, your goal line defence, particularly at periods in that first half, outstanding. Oh, absolutely. But, um, you know, both sides were, it was, it was very similar. You know, the, the effort was outstanding, you know, and to go, go into half time nil all was just a, a, a tribute to both teams' um, effort and the, and the work they put in in the preparation. Any particular standouts uh, for, for you, Rusty? Obviously, a couple of your kind of spine players really stood out. Serena, as usual, had a good game. Yeah, yeah, um, Serena was okay, uh, but um, a, big, a big standout for me was our, our right winger, um, Crystal Stowers. She was outstanding today. Um, some of the, the ball she took, and also, also too, she came into the middle and did a lot of work, and uh, a lot of, um, uh, of the forwards work as well. And she made lots of yardage and lots of tackles as well, but her hands were outstanding out wide, you know, under pressure quite, quite often as well. Um, uh, also, Geneva Weber, she was really good. She played 80 minutes at prop, and her defence was outstanding. And, of course, um, Crystal Rota, I'm, I'm sure she must be close to 45, 47 tackles, I think. Just amazing effort, you know, and then and they're prob for probably 90% right shoulder. So yeah, uh, outstanding effort from those girls. Yeah, outstanding effort, and we did note that during the commentary as well. And uh, Rusty, just finally, you've been involved with uh, women's league at various different levels for a number of years. Must be really pleasing for you to see, uh, you know, providing the live stream today and and girls of all ages playing as well. Oh no, it's great. It's absolutely awesome to see our 15s and 17s coming along now, and um, you know, creating a, you know, um, you know, feeders for the, for the uh, premier um, women's grade, and also looking ahead to uh, 2020 when the, when they have a women's NRL as well. So, you know, that's the that's the future generation. So great to uh, see them all here today, and uh, to see our, our uh, our girls, you know, participating and uh, and celebrating uh, the game that we love. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Rusty. Commiserations on the loss, but all the best for the rest of the season, mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers. All the best. Now we're going to bring uh, Troy Hardy in for our uh, final wrap-up from what has been a pretty packed day here today, Troy. But what a game to finish on. Um, high quality, a tough middle battle, and uh, Richmond probably deserving winners in the end there. But Manurewa, what an effort from them. Some of those goal line Absolutely. stands outstanding. Yeah. No, today's been fantastic, and it's a shame that the weather didn't let you know some more of the, the speed and talent come through. And as you know, Rusty alluded to, it was a wee bit of a mud fest. That said... I think it's been a massive day for the Auckland Rugby League, more importantly, the women in league today. And, um, you know, uh, big, big ups to everybody involved, the volunteers that make it happen, you know, the staff that have come down and got involved with it, and also the board for allowing the uh, live stream to go out, you know, free of charge through the Auckland Rugby League website. It's just been a great day all around. Um, the young girl, the highlight for me today, Imogen. You know, a little 10-year-old yeah. running the line. No I mean, how fantastic was yeah. that? You know, so um, we've been really fortunate today to be um, touching base with match managers, you know, um, uh, the referees, um, you know, all the volunteers, just out, not, you know, not, not just the players. So it's been a fantastic day for women in league. And um, seriously, my hat's off to them in regards to, you know, 80 minutes of football, delivering some pain. There's some big hits today. 
And then, you know, some of them are mums, mate, and they've got to go home now and cook a meal and get ready for work tomorrow. I mean, that's just incredible, you know? Yeah, that's right, absolutely. So a big thank you to those of you who have watched today, and we are back in six days' time. We've got a big SAS Fox Memorial Premiership clash coming up yeah, between looking forward to that. the Mount Albert Lions and Point Chevalier Pirates. And I know, Troy, both you and I circled that one on the calendar early in the year. So do join us on Saturday from 2 p.m. We're going to be at Fouts Park broadcasting live and free. A big thank you if you have joined us today. It's been an excellent day. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week. See you later, everyone. Catch you next week. Cheers.